Okay. Hello everyone, welcome to the June 30th, 2016 of the Litchfield Mosquito Control District. I'm Chairman John Latcher. To my left is Acting Vice Chairman Al Raccio. I'd like to thank Anthony DeMammer for doing our cable tonight. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, God indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Chair, call the roll. Uh, Acting Vice Chairman Al Raccio. Present. I'm here. Absolutely. Uh, public input. Anyone from the uh, public wishing to speak? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Um, Could you just please state your name and address for the record, please? Yes, my name is Susan Macumber. My yeah. address is 29 Candle Ridge Circle in Litchfield. Okay, welcome. I have been a resident of Litchfield Heritage Park uh, since January of 2013. Um, I am here because I went online to the Mosquito Control District to try and learn as much as I could about you, the board, um, and I gather or have to assume that you deal only with mosquitoes outside, not inside. Can of a you house. Clarify? Oh, yeah. thank you. Okay, inside of a residence. Okay. For the past three summers, my house has been infested with mosquitoes in the summertime. I have tried to learn as much as I could about why they're there, what's going on. I've talked to, for instance, Jean at Farmers Exchange in Nashua, who I've known for many, many years. Uh, and um, the mosquitoes are inside the house and they're trying to get out. The infestation this year started summer solstice, 20th of June. I've had one outbreak that day. I just had another outbreak approximately a week, nine days later. These are some mosquitoes right here. What I'm here for is wondering whether you would have any suggestion as to where I go from here, what do I look for, who do I talk to, so on and so forth. I have learned that somewhere inside of my house there is water, standing water. That's where the mosquitoes are breeding. I have done all sorts of things as far as closing off vents, sealing off things, putting things in windows, checking all my screens, so on and so forth. Are they coming in anywhere through your sewer pipe or anything, a vent pipe or anything? The, like that? My, I'm getting to the point where is it possible that there is water inside the walls? Uh, of my house and the mosquitoes are coming through. Wow. I have five overhead cam lights in my kitchen, yeah. which obviously are exposed to the whole interior of the house. How old is the house? Ten years. So it's relatively new construction. Yes. Is it a finished basement? The basement is finished. Is there um, a pump it, uh, in the basement, a sump pump? There is a pump that sends the water up to the first floor from the washing machine to uh, the, they, the condos were constructed that you would put the washer and dryer on the main floor. I move my washer and dryer down to the basement. There's a set tub or whatever. I will tell you that not only I, but I've had other people crawl all over the basement. There is no trace of is water there, uh, anywhere. Is there gutters? Yes, there are gutters in when's the last? When's the last time the gutters and the drainage pipes were cleaned and sealed? That I have not since I'm aware, since I've lived there. So the, the, the first place because you mentioned you have ceiling in, in, the, in the kitchen, in the kitchen. Only, right. in, only in the kitchen that are open. If there's standing water mm -hmm. in the gutters from mm -hmm. leaves or well, mildew the, or dust and dirt the, contamination, the, right? 
the gutters are all closed, you know, the roof comes over and the gutters all have a closing underneath it. So no leaves, they never yeah. clean them out. There are no but leaves. water in there. gets in there. Water, obviously. If water gets in there, mosquitoes get in there. And how do they go from there into so my house? So the next house? question is, if they're breeding around your house. Outside? If the yeah. gossets and the eaves have any opening mm -hmm. into your breathing space, mm -hmm. that, that gutter system is sitting right there, mm -hmm. your eaves are right there, mm -hmm. and your kitchen lights are right there. Right. Keep in mind, you got a bag of mosquitoes. Right. right. Any cracks or settlement right. or shifting, yeah. Yeah. they're in. They're in. So, and, it's and it like, sounds like she. It's, it's, it's the first time I've that, ever heard that. I, I, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. In only, all the I, years, right. I've never I'm heard anybody only, say to us. I've never heard. When, no. she, when she said inside, I yeah. was like, what? Well, I'm the only one. I'm in a, yep. the end unit yep. of four. I'm the only one that has mosquitoes. So and the rest now, of them all have their gutters and when, everything. Now, else. when you say mosquitoes, is males, females? How, when how they many first, when they first, oh, I was sitting at the kitchen table having coffee this morning. I was bitten twice. I killed three mosquitoes yeah. before they got to me and drew blood. Right. Um, I when they first showed up like, on the summer solstice, there were probably at least ten mosquitoes in nine windows on the first floor. Like when you go into a room, I mean, is there is there mosquitoes? They kind constantly? of disappear during. Is the there day. a section of the house where you notice that there's there isn't more any than, activity? Yeah. Or? More than any, they would be in the kitchen dining area, in the front living room, the yeah. so front and the back of the house. Right. What so, any type of standing water around the property? Swamp. There's. I mean, we have wetlands, you know, way off in back, but but what right. you know is you know these are mosquitoes that are. Up against the screen, they want to go out. They don't want to come. They're not coming right. in. No, no, I've no, sealed. No. I've sealed no. off I'm all the drainages in my screens. Those have been sealed off. So, so, so right. yeah. once again, back to the sewer system and the ease and stuff. If, if there is an entrance point, mm -hmm. you know how your sinks breathe, right? There's. Like on the on your, well, the drain pipe comes down and then well, goes. Well, right, the main drain, mm -hmm. but there's a breather as well, right? If you look at a lot of your bathroom sinks mm -hmm. and bathtubs, Where's there's the, an air vent so that, that it, yeah. the water can flow and draft air, yeah. right? Where's that vent in the? It's usually so, for the roof sometimes. Right. Well, the the the, the main what, intake may be on the roof, yeah. but. The point again is, you you may seal every door and window in your house. Right, that's what. But I'm you thinking. have not sealed your house because these vents through the sewer system mm -hmm. and Kevin Lynch would be Perfect. would be better I, to talk yeah. to. No, I know. I you know I've talked with Kevin before. And, and has he mentioned any of the sewer lines is, and, and venting? This, this is a problem because the mosquitoes are inside of my house. This is my problem. This is not a problem of the home. Kevin Lynch is the right. building, building inspector. code inspector. Right. right. Your house falls in our tax zone. Yes. Kevin is obligated to talk to you mm -hmm. as a taxpayer and homeowner. Okay. All right. About your unique problem. Okay. Because my now he he, right. he, yeah. he 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 doesn't have to act on it. No, but, but I'm just I'm right. trying to get some help as to where I go. The, what the do I do? The next thing I would seriously you recommend you call Michael. Michael Morris. Michael Morris. Uh, thank you. Yes. We're we're coming to the same. Yeah. Yeah. You should get in touch with Mr. Michael Morrison. Yeah. Al, why don't you f I'll give her like a a, a a brief overview of what Michael does and so she'll know. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Morrison's company mm -hmm. has been our prime contractor yeah. uh, since we started. Ten, ten, almost ten years. Better than ten years. Yeah. Well, he knows the community quite well. Okay, can I first say one thing? Is like the reason I haven't called pest control places or whatever because my assumption is the first thing they're going to say is got to fumigate the whole house. You know, yeah. no, that's no, no, not no. going to do any you, good. You need to understand first What's the happening? root problem right. before you take any action. This, this, Mr. Morris will come to your house. Give you right. The root problem, right. or he'll tell you point blank. Mm. 
geez, I've never seen or experienced anything yeah. like this. This may be a he might right? take a look out outside to maybe see what your what's actually causing right. the problem. It could be something outside that's causing it. Well, this you know, is you that know, he might be able to do because they're inside trip. trying to get out. They're yeah. coming. Yeah. you know, my son. I'm sure that he'll be able to find out. What uh, company is this? Situation. It's Municipal Pest Management Services. <clears throat> what I can do, if no objections with Al, is I can send uh, Michael an email or I can contact him directly over the phone and, and discuss with him her. Well, her we need to be role. careful yeah, here. Yeah, I, I know. Right? I know we do, yeah. We, we sh the first thing we should do is provide you the contact information. That's right. And know, because it is a personal problem. Right. I, I don't town. know. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. And it's, then when Michael investigates this, if it becomes a town issue, town health issue, yes. okay. then we get that, yeah. our health officer and we get engaged as okay. the, the advisory committee to the board of selectmen. Okay, that's why I'm here is to, you know, what's my next step to try and solve this Definitely problem? Definitely contact Mr. Morrison. And it's and Municipal it, Pest Company, yep. Management yeah, it's, Company it's, Services? Yeah, his phone, his phone, I'll give you two. Is he in Lichfield? No. No, man. No. He, he's, he's in Newington, New Hampshire. Right, but he services our, he knows our community. Okay. And his name is Michael Morrison. He's yeah, the Michael Morrison. Let me give you the. I'll give you the address right here. This is his address, and this is his phone number. Okay. Quite a unique problem, indeed. Uh, I, mean, uh, <laughs> I have never heard never, that before. Right. I, I was just like, wow. figure after three years of this, I'm tired of fighting it. I, I, I'm sorry you waited so long yeah, to come see something. us. Well, the, you know, I, I really have to say, I, uh, you know, it's been labeled my problem because it's inside my house. And so it's been up to... I. Well, yes, ma'am, but we are an advisory committee for the people. That's our number one charter mm -hmm. uh, for this committee. It's definitely not a nice place to live like that. You know? No, it isn't. Um, right. <laughs> three, four, wow. Three, wow. Well. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm baffled. Yeah, I'm no, stunned. Uh, that's pretty. Uh, so I, I'm, I, you know, from everybody I've talked to, it's like nobody's ever. No, ma'am. No, you're, you, you are clearly uh, identifying a unique situation. No yeah. question. Yeah. No question. So, do you need my name? And yeah. Sure. Yes. No, that would be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I will get in touch with uh, Mr. Morrison. Yep. Yeah and talk to him about the problem mm -hmm. and see where we go from there. All right, tell him, you can, t I, it, it's okay if she t uh, told that she came here to discuss Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah. You, you I tell my, to be able to tell him we, we, we advised and, you to call him. And, 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 and you were the yeah. ones that advised me to call him yeah. uh, and get in touch with him and, yeah. and have him come over. All right, gentlemen. And let me, uh, let me do this for you. And please, if you would, get back to us on how things are, are progressing, hopefully in a, in a positive. We'd like to hear from you, definitely. I'm sure, I'm sure Michael will let us know, too, but I, I'd really like to hear from you, too. You know, I'd like you to come back again and, and tell us how things are working for you. When um, they told me you meet every third... So yeah, week, yeah. This, this, week, this week's a little unusual because we had commitments last week, but... Uh, Don't hesitate. Call me, please. All right. Fine. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Yep. Have, Have a good you. evening. Have a nice and I hope weekend. You. Thank you. I hope your problem gets resolved quickly. So do I. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Wow. That's uh, well. That's quite unique. <sighs> Three know, years of tolerating that too. That's where we can put the bad box. <laughs> In <Okay>. our <laughs> living room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. wow. Oh. Okay. Next on the agenda, we have some Tripoli and West Nile virus videos to the public from the American Mosquito Control Association. So, Tony, as soon as you cue those up, we can show them to our viewers. And then we'll get back to any other business. Mosquitoes, the deadliest creatures on Earth, are responsible for killing more than one million people each and every year. 
Mosquito control is an important public health function. Fortunately, most people in the United States live, work, and play in areas where publicly funded programs help protect people from mosquitoes and the diseases they carry. These programs, run by mosquito control experts, have made great strides in safeguarding our health and quality of life. For example, malaria was once a big problem in the United States, but has essentially been eliminated from our country. The battle continues, however, because mosquitoes still routinely transmit diseases. West Nile virus is the most common, affecting thousands of people each year with symptoms that range from fever to lifelong debilitating consequences, even death. Crystal Wally is living proof. It was heartbreaking. I have a husband and I have two little girls and I was just scared to death that they were gonna lose me. My first symptoms, I felt really fatigued. I would go home from work, I would get off around 3.30. By the time I got home, I would have to get in bed and I wouldn't get up till the next morning. Then I noticed my lymph nodes were swollen. I had a rash on my upper chest and back. It was just really scary. But today, Crystal's on her way to recovery. I was completely paralyzed for almost a year. Had to relearn everything, had to have people take care of me, having sitters to live inside with me to take care of my children. And today, I'm not 100% recovered, but I live a functional life. I take care of myself and my family. Adequately funded mosquito control, disease surveillance, and public awareness are the best ways to protect our health and quality of life from the danger of mosquitoes and the diseases they carry. William Terry would agree. I was coming down with stomach flu, and my wife came to the doctor, and the doctor put me in the hospital. I went in a coma for three weeks, and then when I, when I came out of the coma, I was paralyzed. Like Crystal, William also contracted West Nile, and he lives every day with permanent effects of the virus. It's been 11 years since, since I got it. And now, I have to wear braces on my legs to, to, to get around and walk. The hardest part of it is trying to keep my balance. I can walk without the braces, but it's, it's not a pretty sight to see me walk. Mosquito control professionals, you don't realize how important they are to your community. So I'm really thankful for the people that we see in neighborhoods like mine. Rick LaBelle has a different story. His daughter lost her battle at the age of 20 after being bitten by a mosquito that carried Eastern Equine Encephalitis, also referred to as Triple E. Children are not supposed to die before their parents. You bring them into the world, you raise them, you love them, uh, and you hope that uh, they go on to become successful. So the shock, it's just, there are no words to describe it. It's incredibly important, it's paramount for individuals within communities, community leaders, and not just community leaders, but everybody, every citizen of that community to support mosquito control. Individuals that work for mosquito control, they are unsung heroes. Don't take chances when it comes to mosquitoes. Protect yourself and your family, and support your public mosquito control program by encouraging government officials to adequately fund public health programs, eliminating mosquito breeding sites on your property, and encouraging your friends, neighbors, and community to do the same. What's the magic word, Aaron? Get rid of the King interview. Take one. Hardly anybody knows that I have a problem if they didn't know me uh, beforehand. But I look normal. I act normal. Uh, but I'm not normal. The neurologists say that I'm probably about as good as I'll ever get, which means I'll always walk with a cane. If I fall down, I have to have somebody help get me up. I won't ever be strong enough to lift my kids. children and I uh, no. I have four children, three that are alive and one that's dead. They 
Adriana was amazing. She could light up any room. She was a smart dog. She was just learning to ride her bike. She was super excited about entering and got in and being able to ride the yellow bus. On the fifth day at the hospital, she was pronounced brain dead. And um, then she died in my arms at 10.39. And uh, that was it. Mosquito killed my child in less than six days. My son and I were playing out in the front yard doing some work. We started getting uh, eaten up by mosquitoes. Probably about three days later, I started feeling like I had a bad case of the flu. And that's kind of when the nightmare started. I can very clearly remember when the doctor came in because I couldn't listen. She told me I had West Nile virus. I had no idea that it existed. Uh, I had no idea that it could do what it did to a human being. And I certainly had no anticipation that I would spend the next year of my life in a bed and learning how to redo things that my children had recently learned how to do. When I was admitted to the hospital in Bloomington, my wife Roberta called my brother and said, if you want to see him before he dies, you better get on the next plane and get here. My legs were paralyzed, my arms were paralyzed. To stand up was excruciatingly painful. It almost kill you, it was so painful. I was out of work for seven months. When I went back to work, I could see patients for one hour, and then I had to go back home and go back to bed. I wasn't sure I was gonna survive. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to go back to work at all. So the fact that I'm able to go back to work even if I can't do everything I used to be able to do uh, is really a blessing. August 29, 2009 to February 28, 2010. I did another six months of rehab, learning how to relearning how to walk and swallow and speak. The people that get sick tend to have permanent, lifelong problems because of the illness. Only one of my lungs works, so I breathe at about 50% capacity. I have nerve damage throughout my extremities, which means I can't I can't run. Uh, I can barely climb stairs. It's the sort of thing you never think will happen to you. I was perfectly healthy. It happened to me. It's non-discriminatory. And uh, once you get it, <laughs> you know, uh, you've got it. And there's nothing out there that stops what it does to you. Mosquitoes aren't mere annoyances anymore. They have devastating effects. Physically, emotionally, financially. Like for us, it, it, six days in the hospital, it was $180,000 out of pocket. The economic impact of one person uh, getting West Nile and going through what I went through is, is pretty tremendous. And it's such a simple thing to take a few steps to avoid. We eliminate any breeding grounds. Mosquitoes only need an eighth of an inch of water to breed in. Two drops of water in a bottle cap or an overturned flower pot or something in the yard, that's where they breed. All you can do is, is protect yourself. Burying a child is the hardest thing in the world. How wonderful she would have been. What a great big sister she could have been. She was riding in a hearse to her final resting place rather than being on the big yellow school bus for her first day of school. And she never got to experience life. I have a very strong faith that God only takes the best. He only gives you what you can handle. And he gave me a purpose in life. People really don't realize the potential problem for infectious diseases like West Nile until it comes home to them. You're either lucky like me, and you get to live like this for the rest of your life, or you're unlucky and you're dead. Just because it doesn't happen to everybody doesn't mean it's not a big deal. Just because it hadn't happened to you yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen to you next week. My name is Sean Lemoyne. I'm a business trial attorney. My name's Kimberly King. I live in Pembroke, Massachusetts. I'm Dr. Don Reed. I'm a colorectal surgeon at Medical City, Dallas. My story's real. The other victim stories, they're real. Is it fearful? Yes, but it's real. You have to be vigilant. We have to take public health measures to try to prevent this disease from occurring. It's important for the public to play their part, too, and, and take personal responsibility. It, it needs to be done.
Okay, those are some videos from the American Mosquito uh, Control Association. And that's basically what me and Al are trying, have been doing here for the last nine or 10 years now, trying to prevent incidents, incidents like that from happening to anybody else. Okay. So let's go to the approval of the minutes of May 19th, uh, 2016. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes as written. Okay, I'll second it. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes 2-0. Okay. Next, I'd like to talk about the contracted ac activities uh, from Municipal Pest Management Services for the month of July. Uh, it calls for complete larviciding. Uh, microscopic species determination of the larvae, weekly mosquito trap, trapping and testing, a complete street catch basin uh, live siding, and provide a minimum of 120 labor hours to complete the listed activities. And that will be total activities for the month of July, $3,085. Any questions on that, Al? No, pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Standard. Right. Fortunately, we're consistent. not calling for extra services right. yet. It's consistent with the regular contract, right? Yep. yep. Um, Al, did you want to bring anything up that you, that, uh, uh, as far as the, uh, the results, the recent results that we just got from Municipal Pest Management? Uh, sure, John. Right. I, uh, uh, the committee receives an annual, uh, I'm sorry, monthly report uh, of the testing for uh, this month. The conclusion of this month, uh, we've collected approximately uh, 520 um, individual sample sets. And what's unique this early in the season is of the 520, four fifths, approximately four fifths, or 390 were uh, of, of the perturbin base. And if you look at the graphs uh, quickly, the uh, perturbins clearly outnumber uh, any of the other uh, 11 species of uh, the current trap set. Right. What's particularly uh, alarming about this is these are our vector uh, carrying species. Yeah. And for these kind of numbers disproportional this early in the season uh, doesn't vote well for uh, July, August, and early September. Yeah, those are known carriers of West Nile exactly. virus from Triple E, yeah. Uh, given the heat conditions, right. fortunately, uh, we're in a mild drought condition currently. Yeah. But if this changes, and you, you, you simply forecast the numbers, uh, we could be calling on barrier spraying early this year, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the park activities, right. uh, as well as potential other actions that may result out of this and the surrounding community's results. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, this is very interesting. We now have 10 years of collected statistics uh, which uh, fortunately have been trending downward uh, to our benefit. Yeah. Uh, so that's really the, uh, w w when the chairman reports about these collection activities and, and the samplings and the trappings, these are the numbers that, that we get out of them. And these are the numbers that your tax dollars are paying for in the, uh, protection and prevention uh, budgets. One thing I noticed too, Al, was <clears throat> on the recent testing that we just received is that I don't see any melanora mosquitoes Correct. caught at, on that on that whole list. Correct. That's kind of unusual too, but. Well, once again, yeah. this is. Uh, this preliminary, is right. Preliminary, right. well, it's not preliminary. It is early in our season. Yeah. Uh, these numbers will grow substantially. Definitely. I think uh, the total last year was a little over 37,000 individuals collected through multiple 
uh, right. samplings. Uh, that that that's quite an achievement for our community. Yeah. Uh, that's quite a tribute to our uh, residents who believe in what we're doing and continue to fund our budgets uh, for this work. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go down to any other business. I don't have any any other business. Al, do you have anything? For us? Uh, just a, just a couple of brief statements, Chairman. Okay. We have been uh, without a third member now for almost. This will be our third season. Uh, uh, at the close of this, we desperately need another volunteer or two to become an active member and an alternate member. John and I both work for a living. Uh, our, our prime season is now. Our charter is to educate as well as provide guidance and uh, information to the Board of Selectmen and, and, and our health departments. Right. With, with summer vacations, summer workloads, things are not going well for the committee. We're, we're falling behind in our due diligence to our charter, and most importantly, our due diligence to each and every one of our citizens. This is, this is now to the point where I've asked the chairman to go to the Board of Selectmen and request active advertising. We need a third member in order to meet the community's needs. We talk yeah. about school budgets growing, town budgets growing. We talk about the need for roads, sidewalks, phase of the moon, rise of the tide, Everybody wants something that costs tax dollars. The Mosquito Control District tax dollars are driven solely by the contracted service. John and I collect an annual salary of not $500 each quarter, of not $32 an hour, but our annual salary is $0 an hour. Our third member, our virtual member who is missing, would enjoy the same salary and benefits. However, there isn't another employee in town that can state they provide a service as a volunteer that has substantial meaning. And we hear about sensationalism, the police saving lives, our fire department saving lives, God bless them, each and every one. We need a volunteer for our members. We need a volunteer for our community. And I'll, I'll leave it at that, John. Thank you. Yeah, we've been looking for somebody for a long time. All we really, all we need is, we could use just one person for now. <laughs> but, uh, Absolutely. There's got to be somebody sitting at home right now watching us uh, that could that could give, you know, an hour of their time on, on once a month on a Thursday. Um, that's one thing that I don't quite understand, Al, is that, you know, when you live in a community, I don't want to, I don't want to sit here and pontificate to everybody, but... When you live in a community, you know, you, you got to try to give back to the community, too. That's what makes the town better for everybody. And um, I'm sure that somebody out there has at least one hour a month uh, to come down here and, and uh, join our committee. Um, as you know, like you, you, just, you just said, that two is really not enough. Uh, we need at least three on the board um, but we'll just continue to to, uh, to do what we've you know what we can what we can point. for now you know I don't know of any other position in town that can uh, provide you with the opportunity to be on nationwide TV <laughs> <laughs> yeah. only the mosquito control district can can state in the town's history that we've made <laughs> 
nationwide TV. Yeah. Well, come join the <laughs> come join the fun. Absolutely. Well, Al, uh, it, <laughs> if I may chime in on that one more time, uh, John Oliver said that we didn't have any views when, during the show, but I've been checking the views over the last few months. Every time we have a mosquito control district meeting, we have at least 400 to 500 views. So there are people watching us now. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. That's a very so that's a positive, right? So I wonder if one of those 500 people might want to come down here and join us. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. You, you Who can. knows? Maybe you can be on television again. You never know. Right. Right? Well, at least once a month. Yeah, at least once a month. That's at right. At least once a month. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, and um, just like I said, those those videos from the American Mosquito Control uh, Association, that's what me and Al are trying to prevent from happening from anybody else. Um, the gentleman that you saw the last, uh, on the first video, the, the, the gentleman that you saw was from New Hampshire who lost his daughter due to Tripoli at the age of 22. Um, and that's really what started me in going into the... Uh, to getting the mosquito control district into town uh, was that that incident right there. So um, I hope that we might be able to get one more member. If not, like you said, we'll just keep going on, slugging it out here. But um, hopefully one more person will show up or show some interest. And if you are interested, please call Town Hall and they'll forward the information to, uh, to me and Al. Al, anything else on the, any other no, business? No, sir. Happy 4th of July yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Uh, God bless the people that have served the country. Yeah. We thank you uh, for your service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, motion to adjourn. So be it. Okay. Uh, meeting ends at uh, 740. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Have a safe July 4th weekend. And we'll see you back here next month on July 21st.